Hello scholars, welcome back, Mr. Hinkle here. Let's talk about some of the hazards associated with volcanic eruptions. So our lecture today is dun, 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 dun. volcanic hazards. So that's what we're doing, discussing various types of volcanic hazards and then looking at the eruptions and their effects. So let's start with a story. 2,000 years ago, roughly, a volcano in Italy named Mount Vesuvius. Now, this is before geology. This is before science. 2,000 years ago, Earth was still the center of the universe in the geocentric model. So volcanic eruptions were ascribed meanings and values to gods and deities of their wrath being bestowed upon the Earth. Mount Vesuvius, a large stratovolcano, starts to erupt. And this is a massive eruption. Well, during this eruption, Pliny the Elder went out to go record observations. Actually, instead of ascribing meaning and value, he said, there's material of this size falling from the sky, and it began at this point, and it ended at that point. And he recorded his objective observations of what was happening. Now, there was a lot of ash and gas and dust in the air, and his notes survived, although he did not. This was the very first geological report ever created. Pretty cool. He didn't know that he was perhaps the first geologist ever, but sure enough, those records were buried. They were lost for a long time, just like the towns of Herculaneum and Pompeii. In fact, they were completely buried in ash and discovered in the 18th century and then excavated by archaeologists. And what the archaeologists found is actual casts of human bodies, humans and animals that had been rapidly, completely buried. And then their shapes, because the organic material had decayed by that point, but their shapes had been uh, preserved in a cast that we can now see. And they were literally laying down in these various positions. So point being, thousands of people died in these cities from this volcanic eruption because volcanoes are hazardous. They have a series of different hazards which are dangerous phenomenon associated with volcanic activity and the risks are to human life. The risks are to property because we have amazingly built up societies and also risks to the environment that can in turn pose a risk to us. So here, here we see we've got earthquakes, lahars, pyroclastic flows, lava domes, eruptions, pyroclastic flows, landslides, ash fall, all kinds of things happening. Let's go through some of them. Lava flows. So this one might seem like the most obvious. When a volcano erupts lava, that lava flows over the surface and it's hot. If you are enveloped by that lava, you are no more. If your house is enveloped by that lava, you can see this house is literally on fire getting swallowed by this lava flow, Mount Kilauea. Such a great example to teach volcanoes about. It's taking out these houses that were built on the flanks of the volcano. Volcanoes will be active and then go dormant and become active again. And during their dormant periods, people like to build on the sides of them. The ground is fertile. The views are nice. Many volcanoes are islands that have, you know, island views. So lava flows can be very damaging, destructive hazards for buildings and people. Let's see, I want this to go. Yes. Whoa. OK, pyroclastic flow. Rapid and extremely hot mixture of rock, ash, gas, and dust. Lava flows will be more common with shield volcanoes and cinder cones. Pyroclastic flows are more common with composite or stratovolcanoes because of the type of composition of the magma. Now, a pyroclastic flow, it's one of those where 
the top of the volcano blows up and it emits all kinds of material into the atmosphere, but also along the surface, it can wipe out everything along its path. They're very fast, they're very destructive, and they are very hazardous. In fact, this is the most dangerous type of volcanic hazard. You do not want to be caught in a pyroclastic flow. The magma is silica rich, high viscosity. These turbulent flows of ash and gas and dust make their way down speeds up to 120 uh, miles per hour. Nobody's running away from that. In fact, we couldn't even drive away from that. That's so fast. So when a volcano erupts, when a stratovolcano erupts, you want to make sure that you are not standing in harm's way because the end is not good. Mount St. Helens, 1980, very famous example of a pyroclastic flow from the eruption of a composite volcano. You can see this is a series of photos taken over about 16 seconds where the pyroclastic flow is moving down the side of the hill and then all of the ash completely envelops it. <clears throat> Flattened trees, lots of ash in the air. This unfortunately killed 57 people who didn't see it was coming, were in harm's way. So volcanic hazards are deadly. They are dangerous and they are deadly and they are worth thinking about when you are going to select a place to live. The eruption of a volcano can trigger a landslide. A landslide is the downslope movement of rock, snow, ice, or soil. In this case, it's rock. And we see an eruption here broke the whole side of the volcano, causing that to slide down. Now, this landed in the ocean, but if there was a community of people living on their nice little beach coastal island town, they would have been completely buried and inundated, which happens. Landslides that do enter water can trigger secondary hazards known as tsunamis. Tsunami is a Japanese word for harbor wave. They're very large ocean waves that travel great distances in the sea and can be triggered through various geological processes, one of them being a landslide from a volcano that drops big chunks of rock into the ocean. These waves can travel long distances, causing damage to coastal populations. This is not the most common type of tsunami. Mega thrust uh, boundaries at convergent plate tectonic boundaries. Um, mega thrust faults at plate tectonic can, at convergent. Let me restate. At convergent boundaries, there are low angle mega thrust faults for subduction zones. And those can create significant tsunamis. So not to be overlooked are volcanic tsunamis. Let's keep going. When a volcano erupts, it erupts lava and gas and ash and blocks and rocks into the air. Well, all of the material that is ejected into the air is known as tephra. Let's go over here. And tephra can have small particles that get into your lungs. That's hazardous. It can also be in such quantities that it can pile up on top of structures, causing roofs to cave in and buildings to collapse. So not only do we have to worry about the explosions and the lava and the landslides and the tsunamis, but also the ash that's in the air can cause pretty serious effects. When the lava mixes with water, this usually happens on stratovolcanoes that are prominently rising up into the air with snow on them. Volcano erupts into snow, melts the snow. That snow now forms a slurry, very like wet concrete, that is extremely damaging. We call these lahars. Google lahars, see what videos come up, and you will see some very impressive 
Earth surface processes happening. Significant effect because of how fast and how devastating. It's basically a big wet river of cement that is piling down the, land, uh, the side of the volcano. And if you get caught in its way, it's not good. So what can we do? Doom and gloom, end of the world, volcanoes are going to kill us all, oh no. Well, not quite. Volcanoes are hazardous. But our short list of understanding volcanic hazards and our technology allowing us to predict when earthquakes are going to occur. And it's not so much we're going to predict, but we can monitor indications of an imminent volcanic eruption. Volcanic monitoring is how we safeguard ourselves from volcanic eruptions. And we're doing this by looking at the size and distribution of earthquakes when a volcano starts to shake and create earthquakes. Those are early warning signs that a volcanic eruption might occur. When there is gases that are emitted, this is another early warning sign that there's movement from the magma chamber underneath. Lava is starting to make its way up and some of those gases are starting to release before the big volcanic eruption. And then when we see changes in land surface orientation, right, we'll go delta for change in, I don't know what that is, land surface. Basically, right, if you've got a volcano, and then you see it start to bulge and swell, that's a good indicator. So these are what we're looking for. We're looking for earthquakes, gas emissions, and the topography, the land surface elevation changing. When those happen, we could say there is a high likelihood of a volcanic eruption. We also, we being the scientific community, have identified current volcanoes, where they are, and have labeled them as active, dormant, or extinct. Extinct are no longer going to erupt. Dormant have not erupted in a long time, and active are currently in a phase of eruption, even if that eruption is not occurring today. They're in a high likelihood that they could at any moment. So let's not be concerned or afraid, but let's be educated and informed about Volcanic hazards, because volcanoes are awesome. They're cool, they're magnificent, they erupt lava, they create new earth, they show us the dynamic nature of the surface of our earth, and they are wildly important for the movement of carbon dioxide, oxygen, and other nutrients throughout the earth system. Understanding volcanoes, how they function, how they form, where they're at, and the risks associated with them does provide us the tools to make knowledgeable decisions so that we can confidently live in the places that we choose to do so. So thank you so much, and I'll see you again.